Hi, I thought we'd check out the new Orange Pie 1. What is it? Well, it's a $10 Raspberry Pi equivalent board. Yes, 10 bucks. Unbelievable. Now, I know you can get the Raspberry Pi Zero for five bucks, half the cost of this new Orange Pi one. But the remarkable thing about this Orange Pi one is that not only is it 10 bucks, but it basically is more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 2s. Now, if you actually compare this to the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, there's basically no contest. The Raspberry Pi Zero is a single core um, ARM Cortex A7 running at one gig. But this thing uses the uh, all winner H3 chipset which we'll take a look at. The ARM Cortex-A7 has got four cores in there running at 1.2 gig. Now a fairer comparison here would actually be between the Orange Pi PC it's called, not the Orange Pi one we're looking at here. It's a $15 board instead of a $10 board and it's uh, more compatible with the uh, Raspberry Pi 2 in, in terms of uh, form factor and feature set. But in this case, as you can see, the um, Orange Pi uh, PC has a 4-core ARM Cortex-A7, but it runs at 1.6 gig instead of uh, the 900 megahertz that the Raspberry Pi 2 works out. So much more powerful. And the Orange Pi PC has a couple of little extras like an IR receiver there and it's got a microphone built in. But unfortunately, uh, just like the Orange Pi 1, one of the big downsides, you can't actually power it from a USB connector. You've got to power it from the uh, DC power jack. But And it's got one less uh, USB 2 connector. Raspberry Pi has four. The Orange Pi PC has three. But, you know, both got 100 meg Ethernet. Uh, they've both got uh, one gig of RAM on them. So, you know, and a camera interface. But in terms of uh, bang per puck, it's no contest really. The Orange Pie wins hands down. $15 versus 35 bucks. No worries. And it's not quite as small as the Raspberry Pi Zero, but it's pretty close. And if you actually compare it with the uh, Raspberry Pi 2, then take a look at how small this thing is. It's absolutely incredible what you can get for 10 bucks. And this thing is chock-a-block. As I said, the all-winner H3 um, ARM Cortex A7 processor. And it's got a GPU in there that it's capable of playing uh, H.265 4K video at 30 frames per second. Absolutely uh, incredible. It's got uh, 512 meg of uh, DDR3 uh, RAM in there, which is half that on the Raspberry Pi 2, but the, uh, ra but the orange Pi uh, PC actually has one gig on there. We've got our regular um, uh, micro SD uh, card. We've got our regular HDMI output. We've got USB on the go. We've got a little UART uh, pin header here. But unfortunately, you cannot power this board through the USB connector. Unfortunately, you've got to power it through this little mini DC jack here, and that's really annoying. It's not your more uh, standard uh, 2.5 millimeter size one. Unfortunately, a little reset switch on the side here. Here, and we've got ourselves the uh, camera connector on the bottom here. But uh, apart from that, um, it's basically a Raspberry Pi 2 shrunk down into a smaller form factor with a more powerful processor, more powerful GPU. And it's got a 100 meg Ethernet port, which is reasonable, but a huge downside, only one USB 2.0 port. But hey, given the size of it, Eh. Now, one major thing to be aware of here, the 40-pin hat connector, pin compatible, of course, but what they've done on the uh, Orange Pi 1 is they've actually rotated it 180 degrees. So pin 1 is actually here as opposed to the Raspberry Pi, whereas pin 1 is over here. And that's obvious because if you've got a board, if you've got a hat board that plugs in there, it's not being fouled by these connectors. But this one... Of course, the USB and the Ethernet are there, so you can't just plug the board directly on. So they've rotated it around like that, so you'd actually have, or your plug-in hats would actually go in that direction like that. Just be aware of that. But that 180 degrees uh, modification does not exist on the uh, Orange Pi PC. Orange Pi PC is exactly the same as the Raspberry Pi 2. Now these Orange Pies come from a Chinese company called the uh, Shenzhen Zunlong Software Company. And uh, you can only buy them on AliExpress at the moment anyway. And here's the one we're looking at, the uh, Orange Pi 1. And it's only uh, 10 bucks. And as I said, the Orange Pi uh, PC, that's uh, $15.00. 
And these are the different models that they have on the website here. And they actually sell one that is not listed here because it's very new. It's actually uh, called the Orange Pie Light. And you might have seen that on the uh, box that we uh, had there. It was uh, the same. Now, it's uh, the Orange Pie Light is the same as the Orange Pie 1, except it has a Wi-Fi uh, chipset instead of the Ethernet. So you can see the antenna con uh, antenna connector there. And that one's only 12 bucks, complete with Wi-Fi. And it's got uh, two USB. USB connectors on it, but it's got HDMI. The whole works. It's got the four core, one point uh, two gig processor. The whole works. Unbelievable. Twelve bucks. But just bear in mind, you buy the board for ten bucks. It does not come with the uh, micro SD card or the uh, power supply. So you've got to supply those to get it up and running. Now, one big differentiator with the Orange Pi is that it is actually open source, whereas the Raspberry Pi closed source uses the Broadcom uh, processor and of course the uh, Broadcom processor used on the Raspberry Pi 2 famously can't get the data sheet for it you've got to sign NDA and all that sort of crap but with the all winner H3 uh, chipset here they're both ARM um, Cortex A7 by the way so the same ARM um, Cortex except the all winner A3 is actually a uh, faster uh, processor but you can get like the full like 500 something 600 page data sheet or something crazy i'll link it in down below now if you take a look at the orange pie website uh very briefly it looks kind of impressive at the uh top surface but that's pretty much where it stops i found a lot of issues with this thing trying to set it up and the support and things like that there's just information missing and all sorts of stuff that um you, you, the raspberry pi is just a much better platform if you're a beginner looking to set these things up no contest whatsoever Raspberry Pi is the winner but if you're after a low cost board then uh, definitely the Orange Pi offers the best uh, bang per buck now if we have a look at the uh, builds here these are the different types you can see that the Orange Pi 1 uh, board here only has an Android build uh, that's it it does not have a Linux uh, build available for it but I'll show you an alternative to that later whereas the Orange Pi Plus 2 and the Orange Pi Plus which are different older versions it's got a version of uh, Raspbian here um, but it's old look from the 6th of June 2015 so it's like a, you know almost a year old uh, and that's the other thing they actually claim that uh, this can uh, is compatible and can run the Raspberry Pi image but that's complete BS it does not you can't just uh, get the Raspbian image and put on the or swap SD cards between the Raspberry Pi and the Orange Pi 1 the chipsets are uh, different and even though they use the same ARM Cortex A7 processor they're different they're not compatible you need a different build so that's just that's just BS and all sorts of stuff is missing and like out of date or whatever, not up to date on their website. So just be careful of that. You might actually struggle, especially with the newer Orange Pie one that we're actually playing with here. And if we go into the resources and we go into the download and we actually go and download the Android OS for this thing, you'll know that here's the actual uh, thing where we're downloading Sun 8 w, IW or whatever. And the Google Drive link does not work. And if you go into the HTML source for this uh, page it actually you can find a uh, link to it and it's the wrong version it's a banana pie build it's crazy and then if you hit this uh Beidou cloud it takes you to some uh, weird ass chinese uh website which is auto translated by google which then gets flagged uh, by Google as like a security threat and things like that and you've got to override the security settings in uh, Chrome for example before you could download it and I couldn't download it with the other browsers complete pain in the butt but I don't recommend you run that Android OS because there's famously a very big security flaw in this thing and uh, which made all the news recently. I'm not sure if they've actually uh, fixed it yet, but the Android build of this thing from All Winner uh, CPU, they actually tell you this down here. Look, it's uh, the Orange Pie and the Banana Pie uh, boards as well that use these All Winner uh, chipsets. That massive security threat. There's a back door you can get in and uh, it's a root thing. I don't know the uh, technical details, but I so I don't recommend you use that, but what I'm going to uh, use today is uh, Armbian, which is an ARM build, uh, an ARM Debian build for the Orange Pi 1. So they've gone to the trouble to actually specifically do the uh, desktop and the server version of the Jesse uh, Debian build 
fantastic. And I'm pretty sure that this uh, Ambient build does not have that uh, security threat in it. But I stand to be corrected, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. They've fixed it. So what I'm going to do today is install the uh, Ambient build, the Jesse desktop uh, version here. So you just download, it's a .raw file, you can use the Win32 disk imager or an equivalent on Linux or whatever machine you use to actually write your image to the SD card and then it should just boot. So ironically, I had to go to a third party build here to actually get this thing working because the Orange Pie builds and website just don't cut it. The support's not there. There is a uh, forum, but it's not hugely active yet because these are relatively uh, new boards, but you can get help there. But yeah, they need to do a lot of refinement to their website and just having the builds available that actually work. It's just crazy. Okay, so I've copied that image over and then you boot it up and it's going to take uh, quite a few minutes to get to this uh, stage, but uh, this is only on the first time. And then you've got a uh, login prompt here and you actually have to log in as uh, root and then your password is uh, 1234 for the build. So, yep, we're in like Flynn, we're required to change it. So I don't know what all these errors mean, but it works in the end, and it's got to initialize this thing. It only needs to do this once. Uh, once you do that, then the build will automatically go into the straight into the uh, desktop. So it'll ask you to reset your password. Once you've done that, it'll go in and set up all the GUI for you. So it says Orange Pie 2 Mini, but this is actually a specific build for the Orange Pie 1. I'm not sure how uh, different they are. They could even be identical, but uh, the name of this PC will actually be Orange Pie 1. So they must have tweaked it in some way. And then we choose a username, so EEVblog. And then it asks you some other rubbish. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And we're in like Flynn. Check it out. Here we go. Here's our application. We've got our web browser. Everything's hunky dory. All of our tools are in there. It's installed um, uh, LibreOffice and all the uh, regular stuff. So terrific. And it works a treat. What a Bobby Dazzler. Ooh, zero YouTube subscribers. Um, yeah, <laughs> bug there. I've got to fix that. And yes, it runs uh, Boink, exactly like the uh, Raspberry Pi 2, no different whatsoever. Um, it just works an absolute treat. I've done a separate video on this if you want to know how to get it up and running. And I'm doing uh, SETI at home processing on this thing. And that's why I want this uh, cheap Orange Pi 1, because I'm going to build a supercomputer cluster with them to do this. So, beauty. And we can actually install some uh, benchmarking software here. So I'll just use the uh, command here inside the uh, root terminal. So we'll install the sysbench uh, software. And then, bingo, we're in like Flynn. And then we can actually run some uh, benchmarking. So we can actually run uh, different types of tests. You can see that we've got CPU, memory, uh, threads, and other stuff. So we can actually run the CPU test. And I won't bore you with all the details, but we can set the number of uh, threads here. And we can, oops. We've got to put run on the end of that. So I've also installed uh, Sysbench here on the uh, Raspberry Pi and we'll run that and we'll get some benchmarks figures between the two. And it takes about uh, two watts there just sitting idle doing absolutely nothing on the Arbyan desktop. And as a comparison, the Raspberry Pi 2 just sitting there running uh, Raspbian doing nothing on the desktop, about 1.8 uh, watts. This is uh, running all four cores on the uh, SETI processor at 100%, around about, oh, let's call it 3.7 watts or thereabouts. Ooh, smoking. So this poor little A winner processor is going to get pretty hot. How hot? Well, let's check it out. Here we go. We're looking at, it can get up to 85, 90, 91. Wow. You can get up 90 degrees. That really risks shutting this processor down. Wow, that is crazy hot. Definitely need a heat sink with this. And running full tilt uh, boink with all four cores at 100% uh, the Raspberry Pi 2, eh, about 2.5, 2.6 watts. And if we have a look at the benchmark figures for all four cores there, um, the orange one is obviously the uh, orange Pi one, and you can see it's significantly faster there on either one, two, three, or four cores. Um, on two, three, and four cores, it's about uh, 1.85 times faster. Whoa. 
But if the Raspberry Pi 2, uh, which draws 2.5 watts full tilt, actually got the same performance as the Orange Pi, then it would need 4.5 watts. But the Orange Pi 1 only takes 3.5 watts with all four cores pumping. So it's actually about 28, maybe 30% uh, better in terms of uh, MIPS per watt. So, if you're looking to run a uh, supercomputer cluster of these things, then uh, obviously the Orange Pi 1 wins hands down, or the orange, whatever flavor of Orange Pi, the all winner processor, far superior, and it, this could even be better with the all winner PC, which is 1.6 gig uh, core as opposed to 1.2 gig uh, core we're looking at here with the Orange uh, Pi 1. So, not only is it better bang per buck, but it's more efficient too. Winner. All winner. And the memory on the Orange Pi 1, 58% faster than the Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, it does it do the memory benchmark on 10 gig worth of uh, 1K blocks, 7.1 seconds as opposed to 17.2 seconds on the Raspberry Pi 2. Beauty. So there you have it. That's a quick look at the Orange Pi 1. And it's much better, bang per buck, uh, performance per watt than the Raspberry Pi 2. And... For 10 bucks, it's absolutely amazing the value you get with this, but it has its downsides. The software builds are terrible and the website's <laughs> almost terrible, but hey, it's open source versus non-open source. It's cheap. It's only 10 bucks. If you're a beginner and you want the best experience possible, just stick with the Raspberry Pi. But if you're doing something like I'm going to do, which is build a supercomputer cluster with these things and price and uh, performance per watt, matters then definitely um the orange pie with the all winner uh h3 processor is an all winner i love it it's just a shame it's not nearly as polished as the uh raspberry pi but hey for the price it's hard to beat but yeah only if you know what you're doing and um uh, you can run pretty much anything on this thing you can run android of course but as i said there's a there's a, a security um exploiting that so be very careful but you can run you can probably run a uh, raspian uh build if you want to you run ubuntu or whatever but i ran uh debian um, or Ambien, no problems whatsoever. They've already compiled this. The Jesse desktop works. You can get a light uh, server version and it works just great. So yes, it has its good points and its bad points. So weigh those up if you're looking to uh, buy this sort of thing. But if you're looking to run video, I didn't run any video uh, test here, but I've um, heard that it runs 4K video 30 frames per second seamlessly. You can't do that on the Raspberry Pi. So if you're looking to use it as a media center or, you know, something like that, playing, uh, playing back video, then it's a much better solution. But make sure you put a heatsink on the thing because this thing i've also read that it can actually uh, shut down the processor can shut itself down or maybe even destroy itself um if you tax it like that so definitely get a, a stick on heatsink i don't know how well they're going to perform haven't actually measured that yet but definitely do that if you're going to play around with this thing so there you go i um oh by the way aliexpress buying this thing only on aliexpress was a pain in the butt i had to try four times and my uh credit card was rejected like three times on the fourth attempt i finally was able to order these things through alipay and it's a uh, pain in the butt anyway that's the only way you can get it but for 10 bucks and three bucks 60 postage to australia it's a winner it really is amazing what you can get these days unbelievable anyway if you want to discuss it links down below all that sort of stuff hope you enjoyed it catch you next time hi how many of you have one of these lying around? A Raspberry Pi, be it an original Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 2 like I've got here, or whatever the latest flavor is. I bet there's a lot of people out there who bought one of these things because, hey, it's a cool little Linux computer, you know, and it's super duper cheap. Hmm, I've got a couple of these lying around the lab. What can I do with them? Can I do anything useful? I know, let's look for aliens. Why? Because, Aliens.